I V M. Welcome back to the Vishal Gondal Show, a show where we deconstruct the amazing life of absolute performers and super performers. And today I have on the show someone who is lively, full of life. She's been a child artist, a model, a digital marketer. and somebody who has dabbled with entrepreneurship and a whole host of things together uh of late uh, i've been extremely you know i've been literally trying every day uh, to convince her to come back to india because she's in this very cold country where there are hardly any people and her amazing talent is just not going to be enough for the small population at canada so let's invite uh, to my show Uh, a dj uh, a marketer and what she calls herself a hustler uh, vishaka soda so vishaka welcome to the show hi vishal how are you doing so oh, what's happening when are you coming back to india let's start I with the first question i was laughing <laughs> i was laughing when you were introducing me i don't know i everyone keeps asking like when are you coming back do you miss india like yeah i mean it was a good place okay great i've moved on i am in a different place because i like experiencing different things you know i like that change and i was really really scared because that 27 years of hard work in one country in one place where i go down and everyone knows me you know that street guy who's selling fruits and vegetables or people like you you know um and here like you wake up and you don't know anyone So it is That's crazy. That's what I said, right? I mean, maybe you don't want to come back to India, but India wants to, <laughs> you to come back. But I don't know. I feel I am progressing here way more than I did in India because, as a so-called influencer, there are so many in India, and it's like but there are hardly any people in Canada to influence. No, so that's a good thing. So it always it's a good thing to be like the start of something. and i love how there are very less influencers in canada but ev- like whoever these less people are are so great so you know you're competing against good people versus in india everyone is an influencer everyone is a public figure you know everyone's a celebrity so i also was like not measuring my work to the right people i feel i'm not saying i'm the best but and i think we will talk about it right see right now there is this let me use the word there is this gold rush of everybody running away to canada for some reason yeah, i personally yeah. know at least three cousins in the family who have moved to canada uh, there are you know quite a few people and in ev- even every day i open you know youtube and i am also getting ads immigrate <laughs> to canada and i'm like it doesn't feel like canada it i can only see asians here indians asians so that's why I, i like to call it canada I like to yeah, call it Canada. Yeah, you've <laughs> you've used that term before, but that's true because even when I was interviewing for a few companies when I came in, uh, eventually I realized I'm not a job person. But they were asking me, "How are you settling down? You know, how, is it like a change?" I'm like, "It's not a change. I've not it met a change. single." It is a change. You you were in this amazing city called Mumbai where <laughs> the temperature is forty degrees Celsius. Your roads smell oh, of pawaji, so and you have weird. gone to minus twenty degrees. where there is nothing but uh, canadian uh, you know hmm. these weather apps at minus 20 this is sunny just because they can <laughs> see the sun it 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 it's, it's so confusing you know for someone who's come from mumbai i'm like i never i was never used to checking a weather app you don't check the weather <laughs> app and step out now i need that app and at minus 20 degrees you telling me it's sunny please explain <laughs> you know <laughs> Where well because I? they don't have the sun for 6 months in a year so when they see the sun they call it sunny they are not referring to the temperature yeah at 4 o'clock it gets dark so my body tells me it's time for dinner so i have dinner at 5 o'clock and then it's 8 o'clock and then my body again needs dinner because i'm hungry <laughs> so it's it's my body is messed up my mind is messed up but what i love is the people i'm working with here In India, when I tell the client that okay, this is my budget, no, no, someone else is doing this for two thousand. Why are you charging twenty thousand? Do it for two thousand. So they go from twenty thousand to two thousand. Versus here, they're like, 
okay, we don't have the budget right now, but maybe we can work out this way. You know, they respect your work. They respect what you do. Versus India is only sabzi mandi. It is like, they bargain for everything. I'm not against India. I still love it. I still miss a major part of it. But when it's work culture, in terms of work culture, I like it here in Canada. Like, hands down. Yeah, I can even sense a little bit of an accent also suddenly coming in. No, <laughs> This is this is my recording voice. I don't have the accent. I have a different recording voice. Yeah. Because, you don't have an accent yet. Because yeah. I sound really bad. So I have like a recording voice that I have developed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so before we go to discuss more about Canada, you really started very young. I mean, literally when you were in school, you were acting in TV commercials. Yes. And that too for a product like Maggie. No, not Maggie. I've done Rasna. Rasna, yeah, sorry. I'm talking about Maggie. I've done Rasna, McDonald's. I've done Sancho. Sancho Zip Drive. It was telecasted with Shah Rukh Khan, but I did not shoot with Shah Rukh Khan. Ah, But who cares? I know Shah Rukh Khan. Who cares? (laughs) So yeah, yeah, I started... By the way, guys, every time Vishaka messaged me, she's like, when are you making me meeting Shah Rukh Khan, right? She wants to meet Shah Rukh Khan. You still did not do that. I left the country. I told that, you, you come back and we will get you to meet Shah Rukh Khan. You never did that when I was in India. That's how life is, right? He's here. Anyway, Shah Rukh, you are listening to this podcast. We have somebody who's willing to come back to India if you are yeah. just willing to meet him. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I do. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I'll do it. So how was it like? I mean, how old were you and which school did you go to? How did your school Oh, they were so good. So I was in Children's Academy, Kandavli. And... They knew I, I was in acting. I did it only till my sixth grade because I was like a really good student and my parents wanted me to, you know, like, you have to score good, okay, beta, you know. So I stopped after sixth. But before that, my mom had the permission to pick me in middle of the school. Anytime, just come to my class and take me away. She didn't need any permission. She didn't have to go through the entire process. Just come and pick me any time of the day. So, so was it your parents? Because see, as a kid, you would not apply No, it was me. These... No, it was me. <laughs> I wanted to do it. So they were like, okay, you know, we'll try. And I was going in a train somewhere where someone saw me and they were like, why, you know, they were in the industry. So they're like, why, why? She's so cute. You know, she has the features. She's so lively. She can talk to anyone. You should try. I'm like, And this is when you were in sixth grade. No, this was when I was in second, third grade. In third grade. And then I did it till I was... (laughs) I was a drama queen, boss. I I have... Like, people do that. Like, when they're teens and all, they practice winning awards in the shower. I did that when I was in junior KG. I am not kidding. Wow. I was already a star in my mind. And yeah, I do that till date. But I always wanted to do it. It's something I loved doing. So at when you were in your second grade, you were already acting like you were a Bollywood superstar. Yeah. I didn't get roles like I was a Bollywood superstar, but I was, oh. I was acting like, yeah. Yeah. I was not this, I was not like the snob or the bitchy ones. I was still very sweet, but I felt like, okay, you know, I am a star. That's amazing. I mean, that level of confidence, because, you know, right now, a lot of school kids are just <laughs> that very... sounds like overconfidence for me, but yeah. <laughs> ...are very introvert and, you know, stuff like that. But clearly, in your case, confidence to bhar bhar ke aaya hai, right? Oh, yeah. So, my first, like, when I started playgroup, like, that's the first time kids are going out, they're crying, and they're like, we don't want to go. And I was like a dada, like a dog, okay? It's like... Stop crying, I'll call the police. I was the first to enter and the last to get out of it. Wow. And you know what is what I really believe? I believe in this theory and you are my number one example of that is always have more confidence than capability. True. Capability develops True. and you can improve and you can keep improving. But it's confidence which can take you places and you were born. You know, actually, Shah Rukh Khan uh, said this in an interview that... He's like, I realized I'm not an actor or not a dancer in a very early stage of my life, you know, when he was starting. So he said, I I actually put all my energy in, you know, making people love me, being that charmer, being someone who's confident about my work. And then it just flowed. And I really believe that is true. You know, people will love you for who you are, not, I mean, of course, what you do is equally important, but if they don't love you for what you are, you can't make them fall in love with what you do. So, 
I totally believe that. Wow. So at at second grade, you started your TV commercials. Uh, and were you getting paid at that time? For oh, these? yeah, I was. I was. But of course, my parents didn't like, they were not using this money. So at that time, we didn't have stylists. We didn't have costumes. So we had to take our own thing. So if I was getting 1000 rupees or 500 rupees out of a shoot, an ad shoot, my mom used to spend more than that to get me like the perfect outfit for it. And I was on sets like that. So it was never about money, but because I liked it. Even in school, I was always ahead. Annual days, I was a part of like four to five dance, uh, you know, teams. And I was there in Independence Day, Dumble team and Lazim team. So I was there like everywhere. Yeah. And what do you think? Where were you getting this confidence from? Okay. I feel it's because I'm a Leo. I don't know. I relate to this sign a lot. I'm actually a cusp, a Leo Virgo, but I feel I'm a Leo more. I don't know. What is a Leo? Leo, the Leo is like the lion, the king of. And again, I take. So you believe in star signs? Yeah. Like, were there? Is there anybody else in your family on your mother's side or your father's side who are into theater, into drama? No, I think I'm the only dramatic person in my entire family ever lived, <laughs> and I think I'll be the only one. Except if I have kids who are like me, if they are like my husband, then zero drama. Yeah, so if if the kids are even like five percent of me, then they'll have drama. But if they're not like me at all, then zero. Because Yash is zero drama. I mean, he's drama free. So. Yeah, but you know, you know, coming up for drama, right? I mean, you have been able to successfully take this drama and make it into a career, right? I yeah. mean, you are not just drama for the sake of drama. You are yeah. successful as a child actor. And then you also acted in TV shows, right? I mean, yes, Dil I, Zindagi. What is that I did show Dil called? Dosti Dance. Dil uh, Dosti I was, Dance, yeah, sorry. It's D3. It was so famous amongst the teens. And I never watched these shows, okay? So I had no idea how famous this is and what a big show I'm going to be a part of. And I was this bitch in the show, like the negative lead and... Every time I enter, there used to be like, babe, like, you know, in the background. <laughs> I was, I was that person. And the dialogues were, Maaf nahi karna to ketchup ki bottle to pass kar do, you know? I mean, <laughs> I'm like, what are you making me do? But I was that evil person for all the teens out there. And I was in college that time. So everyone in Mithi Bai was like, oh, look, she's the one. And I had no idea. About the show's popularity. So it was a vamp role, right? Yeah, yeah. I was, and I've always got the vamp. I've like 90% done, done vamp roles after I grew up. I don't think I have that personality, but whatever. And people were like, oh, she's that. People used to tweet like, who is this evil person? She's some Vishakha Sodha because I'm not famous, right? So they didn't know who I was. But they're like, oh, she's some, someone, like one person found me. He's like, she's some Vishakha Sodha. And people used to give me those looks. It's like, that is a character. You know, but that makes me feel that, okay, I, I did a good job because they hate me. So I was like a proper evil person. So that's, I mean, that proves I was good at acting, you know, I mean, if they hate me. So how was it like in college? Were you getting bullied a lot? No, I was not getting bullied. It, this is only during those few months where I was on screen for the those dance that I used to get those stares like, oh, she's, she's that chick. After that, no one remembered me. Like, I'm not that famous to... But my friends did always make fun of me, like the close friends, like, ha, you are the influencer, you know, you're, you're this. And oh, now you'll need to take a food picture. I hate taking food pictures. But so it, I, I am, I'm, even if someone makes fun of me, I'm not someone who'll be like, oh, why? You know, why did you say that? Now I'm sad or I don't like this. When you come, you make fun of me, I'll laugh with you. I'm, I, I can't, I'm not someone who'll take it to my heart. Well, and you know, and, and this is something which I really admire about you, right? This quality of taking absolute critical feedback and not taking it personally and looking at that as an input to improve yourself. Yeah. How did you, how, because a lot of people can't do it because, you know, I mean, just to give you an example, a lot of times we used to get a lot of feedback on our shows. And I remember that my team telling me that every time they gave you the feedback, 
you never took offense to it yeah a lot of people take offense to feedback that how dare somebody told me this or how how dare somebody told me that yeah while you were the exact opposite who said okay this is a problem so give me another chance and i'll fix this yeah yeah so where did you get that approach and how are other pe- how can other people think about it because not many people are like this yeah i i know people who'll be like oh okay i'm not doing it fine is it not okay but he, every time even the goki team came back to me saying Okay, because in the start, the team was growing. I was growing with Goki, you know, it was like together. And they always had some feedback about my show that, okay, this is not working. I I literally have notes in my books that, okay, this is not working. This is not working. And I had it on my desk every time I went live that, okay, Vishaka, start with your introduction. I never introduced myself. End with Be The Force, you know, click end intro. So I I had these pointers because... If I don't welcome this criticism, I am never going to grow. I am going to be there. Because if the people who are watching me are not liking me, how can I grow? I Like I said, if people, the first part is they should love me, you know. And if I don't clear the things that they're not liking, they will never love me. They'll just move on. There's so many people in the world. There's so many talents. They can just go from liking one person to the other person. It's very easy. But having those fans is not easy. So I have to be a people's pleaser. I have made myself available to the public. And if I have done that, I need to accept that criticism. And only then I can grow. But but that's not how today's young people are, right? Because I mean, you are clearly a major exception, you know, among the people I know. A lot of the people uh, who are, let's say, in their 20s today, are really like, oh, you tell me, uh, go take a walk. I am my own person. So I think it's very difficult to give feedback to the millennials or whatever this generation is now called. And we now know that how they are depression and suicide rates and all the... I I, I don't understand. They use the word depression like it's cold and cough. You know, they become sad like, oh, I am depressed. That is not depression. I have gone through heartbreaks. Everyone has gone through heartbreaks. That is not depression. You are sad. You know, you just went through something. It's just, you're just sad. Depression is a very big thing. And a lot of Bollywood celebrities have started talking about it. You know, that it's not just because you're sad or you're having an off day. You can't just pass it off as, oh, I'm depressed. You know, just because you don't have your friends loving you, you can't go and jump off a building. I know, you know, I mean, it is a lot of pressure, but peer pressure should not be so, you know, taken so much to your heart. I mean, I have had people who hate me before. I mean, I, I've not never been someone like, oh, Vashakha, oh, you know, she's like perfect. She's amazing. No, I have had people hate me. I have had people dump me. It's a part of life. You grow through these experiences. And you know, these things are not something you can teach someone. Till you don't want to accept these like confidence or accepting the way you are. You can't teach these to someone. These are something you just have to do it yourself. I I heard this in one of the Goki seminars I was at. I think it was Luke who said this. You can talk to someone about confidence, about believing in yourself every day, 24 hours, 365 days. But you can only be that confident if you want to be. You can't teach them. You know, you can listen to all these podcasts, but in the end, it comes to you. So really, you can't teach this to someone. And I don't know what these millennial things it is. They blame it on peer pressure. They blame it on how competitive this world is. But all of these things have always been there. These words like peer pressure and competitive world has come now. But it's always been there. We ha- you have lived through it. I have lived through it. It's not a big deal. And and do you think social media has a role to play? Because millennial, this generation is the first generation who's spending their yeah. early teens and youth on social media. I mean, yeah. luckily for me, that time social media was <laughs> not there. So you are part of the generation who literally grew up on social media. Yeah, I've seen social media not being there. And I've seen the start of Orkut when I was in my teens and... I wouldn't say I am addicted to it. I know where to draw a line. I mean, my friends will say she's always on on the phone, but I also know where to draw a line. You know, I, I don't put everything on social media. I don't get bothered with... I'm losing followers every day. I don't get bothered with such things. I, I don't get a lot of likes on some pictures. It's okay. 
I don't need approval of people and these millennials need to understand these numbers are not the numbers they should be worrying about when it comes to success. The numbers uh, maybe in their bank account is something they should be worrying. Are they getting work? Even if they are a social media influencer, if the brands are paying them, which means you're doing good. It does not matter how many likes you have, how many you know followers you have. Do good work and it'll just follow. This is not life. It's just one bit of social media. It might even go away someday. Like TikTok is not in India anymore. You know, it, it might just go away someday. What are you going to do then? So as a blogger also, when someone asks me for advice, I tell them, you need to have something else with it. I always had something with it. You know, I've, I've never been like a full-time blogger. So how did you learn to sell yourself to marketers or brands or, you know, because there is so much competition. I mean, if you want to be a child star or an actress, there are 25,000 people yeah. trying to pitch themselves for these roles or for these projects. What has been your approach? So my USP has been, uh, I am who I am. I'm candid. You will never see pictures of me with dark lipsticks, eyeshadows, perfectly done hair. I mean, I just do basics. My under eyes are a problem. I fix that. Okay, this is who I am. Candid. My captions are usually making fun of the situation, fun of me, more relatable. If you can't relate to me, if you look at me like, oh, she's some big person, she's a diva, you will never relate to me, you know, and that relatable factor is something that is getting me brand deals. It, it It's just been a smooth process. Very recently, I was at a hotel shooting. And they say we have worked with a lot of influencers before and we stopped because we didn't like it, we didn't enjoy it. And the feedback they gave me is we loved it because you did it from your heart. It didn't look like you are selling us it looked like you're having fun and you're just saying that okay this is where I am this is what I'm doing it's so candid and if you're not yourself people change on social media if you're not yourself you you can't grow you have to be yourself how long are you gonna fake it fake it till you make it is no does not exist any longer you know yeah in fact in social media it's about being authentic right people yeah. can see through your fake if you're faking it they will catch it in a yes, second yes yes it's very very easy i know people i know bloggers even from canada even when they want to come on their stories their makeup is on like you know they are fully done just to be on stories i'm like I can never do that, you know, even uh, when I'm going live, a lot of times I get a feedback, Vashaka, you look a little sleepy, you know, or just put lip gloss, conceal your eye under eyes. I'm like, I, I can't, this is me. These are my flaws. And if you, if people can't accept me like this, I don't need viewers like that because I don't want to present myself as a fake person that, oh, you know, look, her skin is so flawless. I don't want to be that person. This is me. This is normal. But but you never had peer pressure. What was the kind of peers you had in India? <laughs> I had, no, of course I had peer pressure, but I don't know. I never fell into it. It's just probably, is it the person I was? I don't know. I mean, I sound very saint when I talk like that, but I don't know. I mean, I never went partying. Uh, I did maybe a few times, but I'm someone, if even if I go for a night out, I'll sleep by 10. Like I, I'll find a corner. And 10, 11, max 12, I am gone. So it's just my body never, I don't know, I never liked it. And I was always, I always felt I'm wasting time. I would have probably worked. Like, I, you know, I got two hours. I could I could do some work right now. You know, so that that's how, I don't know. It's, it's always been, that's how my mind thinks. That, okay, I'm wasting time. I want to work. But I think in your case, especially, you know, you also took to be in charge of me getting the finances for the family. I know that very yeah. early on, you were not just doing this as, you know, hey, something I'm doing on the side. This became the primary source of earning for you and your family. How was that whole phase? How are you going? How did you go through it? And how did you manage it? Uh, as a workaholic, I loved it. I was also proud that I could help my family do that. Uh, sometimes I also so thought what, what, what is happened because, actually there was there was some change in business or? Uh, no so my dad was a businessman he's into manufacturing garments and suddenly the person who was outsourcing his entire factory for years like since the time I was born suddenly shut his business and then there was like there was no one because everyone was set in their own thing so there was no no one to like work on so he had to shut his factory overnight and 
he's someone who does not like leaving his employees just like that so he paid off paid every single laborer really well and then there was nothing like he because he was also of a certain age you know you can't get a job at a certain age he was very late um so i was working full time uh, i had a proper 10 to 7 job after 7 o'clock uh, i like around 8 i used to get home quickly and i used to go live so 8 to 8 30 something i had my first live i was working with two companies then i used to quickly eat because it's exhausting you know going live for so long then i used to have my second life so i had a proper 9 to 5 job every day two live streams every day and on weekends i used to shoot as an influencer for brands and host events wow that's a lot that was but you know i loved it because even earlier i've had this routine where i attended two colleges so from kandavi i used to go to matunga in the morning to attend my 7 to 12 12 1 college come back home and which college is that roya So I did Roya in the morning. So I was, I was, I. By the way, I studied in the college next to Roya, which is Podar. Podar. <laughs> There was always a rivalry between Roya and Podar. I have no idea why. I didn't. Yeah, even... we used to call Roya students the guy with chappal. So you were part of that. Group, I agree. I, I agree. No, I. I, could, I don't. <laughs> I. I really like have like two to three friends from that college because I couldn't like really gel with the crowd. So I used to do the seven to twelve, Kandavli to Matunga and back early morning, and then I used to change my bags, eat lunch, and then go to Khargar, changing four trains every day, and come back home by twelve. And what was in Khargar? That was uh, NIFT, National Institute of Fashion Technology. I was doing my fashion designing course from there. Wow, you've done fashion designing and you have done economics, right? Or what was your Ruya class? No, I've done fashion designing. I've done Ruya English literature. Then I did my journalism and media studies from Mithibai. And then I did my MBA in operations. Wow! <laughs> so that's like I yeah, in operations. my whole maybe I'll take four lives to complete all these courses. <laughs> I just loved it. I couldn't stop. Even now, I I was thinking to just study further, like do something in marketing because I am into marketing, but I've never done marketing. So after my operations was done, I actually sat for the placements of marketing students. And I was just randomly my my professor just came and was like, "There's a company I think you'll like." My operations professor, he knew I wanted to get into marketing, but study operations, because why would I study something I already know? I would rather study something I don't know. So that mix of marketing and operations just got me a better work opportunity because they technically go hand in hand, you know. So I sat in the interview in literally I didn't have my formals on, I didn't have my resume. I just went inside. I showed them my phone. Be like, like you know, here's my resume. Are you open to taking my interview? And I was the only student who got selected in the entire. Even the marketing people who went through like four rounds of interviews did not get selected for that. But I was the only one who got through that company. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just flowed. I think it is just the way you approach a situation. It's not how much knowledge you have. I because I'm really bad with GK. Okay, I don't know. Like I am very bad. My general knowledge is zero. And they had like rounds of GK and group discussion and personal interview. They just sat. They spoke with me for ten minutes and they're like, okay, you know, come to the office tomorrow. We'll discuss further. So it's just, I think in any situation, it's just the confidence that you go with. I'm not saying just be zero about it, but it, it starts with the confidence and the charm that you have. By the way, do you know what is the capital of Canada? I'm Vancouver. No, British <laughs> Columbia. No. no, you just Amy. <laughs> no, <laughs> and okay, you at least know who the Prime Minister of Canada is. Yeah, oh, he's so cute. Justin Bieber. No, Justin Trudeau. Oh my, there's so <laughs> okay. many memes about him. He yeah, he's cute. such a clown. He's cute. You know when he came to India last, I think last year. He literally wore these very funny Bollywood clothes, and he was roaming all around, and nobody gave him any bow. Modi, like, just met him once. No leader, no minister, no one met him. It was, I think, for Canadians, he was an embarrassment. And clearly, with you know whatever is happening, him making statements on, I don't know why is he worried about what's happening in India. There is a problem in Canada to worry for. I know. I, I mean, they're targeting having. I don't know some millions of people in Canada in next five years. I mean, don't do that. Don't do that. I don't want people here. Everyone Any I left back in okay, India that, coming. Okay, in. I can understand your GK that you still don't know the capital yeah, of Canada. I don't know. It's yeah, I don't know. Capital of uh, India, Delhi. Can we not go okay. there? 
<laughs> no, I just wanted to check how on on how what is your scale of general knowledge. Oh, that's I okay. We are not. I no, I still get lo- lost in Canada. I mean, I have to. Oh my God, I read somewhere else. I have to go somewhere else. It's just very confusing. I, okay, I do you know what the national food of Canada? What do people in poutine. Canada love the most? Poutine. I like it because fries and cheese. It's not food. It's a snack. That how and I that Timmy know. Hortons is so overrated. The coffee. It shop. is overrated just because it's cheap compared to Starbucks. So people just prefer. Which Tim is exactly why I keep telling you that what are you doing in Canada? You should be but in India. But I don't India, like maybe. coffee anyway. That's I, what I'm, I'm saying. There's nothing I, to do in Canada. It doesn't matter. No, if there is. Beyond I can work for Canada and India. In India, I only work for India. So I'm earning in rupees and I'm earning in dollars, you see. Ah, I didn't understand that economics yet. But yeah, but at least when you say sun, there is at least heat here, right? Uh, versus Canada where, you know, sun doesn't work. No, it is heat when it, there is sun sometimes. Like right now, it's sunny outside. And so down, I can see snow. Up, there's sun. <laughs> but Vishaka, coming back to your your days where you were doing triple shifts and, you know, literally burning the midnight oil. How was that feeling? I mean, what did it feel like being so responsible for the family? I felt really proud. And, and and that too at such a young age. Proud not in a negative way. Like I was not not like, oh, chins up. I, you know, like I am the person. No, I want, I, I didn't. And it is difficult because, you know, it is difficult for parents to take support of a daughter. It's different when it's a son, you know. Like, no, you save it for yourself. You need it later after you get married. You, we, you know, we don't want to be dependent on you. So I could see that little embarrassment in my dad and mom because they were like, no, 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 no. We we don't need help. You keep it. Like, what if I was a son? Because they've always treated me like a son. They've never made me feel like, oh, you can't go here. You can't go there. You know, don't wear this or don't behave like this. So you can't say or certain things. In fact, my dad used to always say, That, you know, my daughter will go to see guys. Guys will not come to our house. Like, it'll be the opposite. It's usually the guys, you know, come. My my daughter will go to. Like, she's so capable. She'll do that. So, he's always treated me like a guy. So, I used to get really annoyed, you know, that it's okay. I am working so much. It is in my bank account. Instead of keeping the money there, let's just use it for something, you know. I, I don't earn so much to invest in a new business. But we can make something out of it, you know. But yeah, I'm happy that I was there for them when they needed me. I, I didn't, because I saw a lot of people who were just in, in those times, they were just chilling and partying and spending their money and buying expensive Chanel handbags and Jimmy Choo. For, I could have done that if I say like, if I worked so much and I was just spending on myself, but I felt this was the need of the art and I didn't even regret it. I never felt that I can't do that. So, so what is the most expensive thing you have bought for yourself? I don't know. I've never splurged in bigger brands like that. I can shop or like I can shop from streets. I can shop that $100 t-shirt also and I've shopped from Zara also. So I, I don't, I'm not a brand person, but I think the most expensive, no, it's, it's not a product, but the most expensive uh, thing I spent on myself was a trip to Dubai because I wanted to skydive. So I went with my friend and we spent 70,000, but after, out of those 70,000, 35,000 was only for the skydiving. So you can and imagine. This was the real skydive on the plane and that. Yeah, one. yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. It was 14,000 feet. Yeah, it was 14,000 feet. I actually went there for that. I did not shop. Um, so the only and was it a tandem? Did you do a tandem or a solo? No, dive? I had to do tandem because I didn't learn. But I was supposed to learn how to skydive alone this year. But well, it didn't work out. I believe in spending on such experiences over over brands. You know, someday I'll collaborate with a Jimmy Choo. They'll send me free free footwear. I don't want to. <laughs> That's the confidence. That I, I don't want to spend on that. Yeah. But yeah, so last exactly. year I did bungee jumping uh, from the highest tower. That's in Macau. Uh, I did scuba and Molly. So these are experiences. I feel my money is worth it. I don't want to spend on big brands. That's not the person. No, no, no. And I think that's the lesson which I keep telling everybody, right? That, you know, because we now know what manufacturing is, it's the same product. Only one label has made it expensive. 
and if you are thinking of yourself as a label that certainly doesn't yeah. work but the experience yeah. is the real thing you know there is no label you are jumping from 14000 feet True. or you are visiting a city or a exactly i still see that video and i still get goosebumps i would not feel that when i'm wearing a jimmy choo shoe you know i don't know why i'm targeting jimmy choo but my feet is going to hurt and no one's even going to see the label till i tell them but this is priceless that feeling when you're so high up it's beautiful or maybe scuba diving it's it's something you can never express and these are the moments that i i like spending so you grew up in mumbai you got all your fame in the show business there you were working here everything was happening then suddenly you decided to you know pack up and go to canada how was that how was that decision i mean how easy was that to decide because you it know it was you're... very difficult it was i i went through like you know that i i don't break down when i didn't break down when i was getting married i didn't break down when i even left india seeing my parents on the airport such things don't make me cry but when it came to my career i used to like literally sleep with tears in my eye that i've built something for 27 years of my life in india i cannot leave and this went back when so it was an arranged marriage and at the reason i was not ready to talk to yash is because he was not in india he was in us I'm like i am not leaving my parents are like just talk to him you know because there were so many guys before him i'd already rejected and there were no other rishtas coming and he seemed like a decent guy from a decent family like just talk to him and then we fell in love over facetiming and skype we didn't even meet for the very first year we were just talking online and we fell in love and i was like okay you know what if this is what destiny wants from me i will make the best out of it if i am in india i'm in canada i'm in us it does not matter what matters is the work i am doing or the you know work i'm supposed to do so where i do it from it shouldn't matter you know i shouldn't do that i built something here i will build something there and Yeah I just went with the flow even till now I think what would it be if I was in India but when I see the progress so I have I have a very organized person I have everything on my excel sheet these are the brands I'm speaking to these are the connections I have so every email id I have it on the excel sheet all organized with jono so these are the apparel brands these are the footwear brands with email id the person name and i i can see that i can see like the progress that okay i did better in 2 months in canada than i did in 6 months in india so that brings me self confidence i like tracking the progress because if you don't track your progress you're not going to know where are you at where do you want to reach what are the changes you need to do to get better so it's all organized it's all on like excel sheets and documents and yeah that's that's how i i calculate everything so you know you know literally when i speak to you it seems like the mba in you the creative person you knew the fashion designer in you all of these people are somehow able to collaborate and work together because normally yeah. people can't do this if you're creative you're bad in business yeah. if you're good in business you're poor in something else yeah. and if you're poor in this you're bad in something else i mean you are like the complete package <laughs> that sounds so good to hear <laughs> <laughs> but Ooh, I mean, because I have never heard of somebody being so organized. Yeah, I know that is I I am organized to the T and it is so I I have a friend helping me out managing and he's like it it stresses him out seeing how organized I am. He's like I cannot match up to the level of organization, you know, you do even in terms of a basic excel sheet. So he's like, please check, you know, if it's okay, if it's organized. He, he's like, I panic, and even Yash is like, you don't have to be so perfect. I'm unpacking to a new house right now. He's like, you don't have to be so perfect. It's okay, but I don't know. I mean, sometimes people get annoyed, but I think if I don't do it perfectly, it's it's not right. It did not happen if I didn't do it perfectly. It's still incomplete. It's still left. As it is said, good is the enemy of best. Yeah. So you don't like anything which is good or great. Yes. Good is yes. the enemy of great. Yeah, but I, I, I never even get satisfied. I can't get satisfaction if someone says, "Okay, you know, this is great." I'm like, "Okay, could do better." You know, even in terms of my work. I'm sorry to say this, but a lot of people in your age. you know people who i know really annoy me because they are disorganized <laughs> they are their attention span is of a and yeah. uh, they are not able to focus they are like i don't know what i am going to do in my career 
you know, I mean, like, कोई किसी को कुछ प्लान है ही नहीं मतलब जिसको भी पूछो लाइक यू आर प्लान एंड एवरी थिंग एंड डन एंड यू नो यू आर अर्निंग फॉर योर सेल्फ एंड योर फैमिली एंड एवरीबडी एल्स एंड यू आर इन कैनेडा एंड इनको पूछो कि अभी तुम क्या कर रहे हो मेरा प्लान है कि मैं तीन साल बाद प्लान करेंगे या यू नो दिस एटीट्यूड ऑफ यू नो लाइक हैप्पी गो लकी देखा जाएगा ये एटीट्यूड कहाँ से आ गया हमारे यूथ में it's your life no one's going to come and do it for you even if your parents are well to do it's still you who's going to be responsible for yourself when you look my my only funda is i should be better than what i was yesterday i i go one step at a time i don't want to be the best in the entire world i don't want to be the best digital marketing freelancer i don't know vishaka be... that we know i'm i'm saying what is your advice to people who are not doing what you are doing that's what i want to that's know. what i'm saying so instead of you know sitting and dreaming that okay I'll, i i want to be this i don't know how destiny will take me that's what they feel but even if an astrologer like the best even if god comes and tells you that okay you will be successful if you don't work to be successful it's not going to happen you know so i i know a lot of people are like okay yeah this will happen we are planning to do this we are planning to do this but do it don't plan if you keep planning it's not happening so just just do it procrastination has become an epidemic yeah they just they like okay yeah i know something will happen they they don't even even if they're working in a 9 to 5 they're just doing the routine even if you're a job person there are two type of people i feel there's one who can never do a job and there's one who can only do a job you know nothing against anyone everyone has their own thing but even if you're doing a job if you're not standing out if you're not doing something different you're not going to go up the progress chart you have to do something different every day and that will only happen if you are a better version of yourself today than you were yesterday so that's my only advice if you want to grow just be just go one step at a time today what are you doing that was better than what you did yesterday that's it just so tell me something do you have a lot of attachments i do but i don't show because i don't want those attachments to anchor me down i don't want that emotional weight because all i want to i mean i do i will bal- balance it eventually but i just i just want to succeed like i am i get blinded i mean i'm there when someone needs me everything aside i i can also like get off the internet for for a month or whatever but i like keeping a balance i am if i'm going through something in my life i am I can't show it. My work is separate. My personal life is separate. So I like keeping my attachments where they're supposed to be. They don't. They can't be a part of my work attachments. It it has to be separate. And I've been mentioning. So you are that. you are able to keep them separate, right? Because yes. Because a lot of people have a problem in separating these things, yes. and you know, their poor whatever things in their personal life affects their work and. poor work affects their personal life and they're yeah. just not able to balance it it is difficult i mean emotions see what i feel is is love your work and these are the two things that are actually driving you love can be anything from your friends your family anything so your emotions and your work these are the only two things that we actually live for that work relates to your finances your success and everything so major like the big umbrella is love and work your career and if you mix these up i think it just becomes so messed up that at a point it becomes difficult to get out of it and i feel this is one reason why people avoid having relationships at workplace you can't you have to draw a border line you know you can't mix these things up because if if you're going down on on one boat you you sh- it shouldn't affect the second boat you know that's i mean i don't know if i'm using the right metaphors but it yeah if you're already sinking it on one side why do you want to sink on the other side also so tell me why did you learn why did you opt for english literature because that was the easiest and i didn't need any tuitions for that <laughs> <laughs> that's a very honest answer i must I, say because, because i had to graduate yeah. you know to to plan and frankly till i finished my english literature my graduation i had no idea i was one of the kids that i didn't know what to do with my life i planned on doing fashion designing my entire life but after i joined the course i was like this is not for me i can't do this so i was at a point of time that i don't know what to do next i have no idea what am i doing next even when, in fact when i took journalism and media studies i just took that as one year 
to tell my parents i'm studying something but for me internally i was still scared i was still wondering of what am i going to do in life because when i was growing up it was just if you don't do mba doctor or or a ca engineering engineering, engineering you are a waste my you are okay you know you took arts whatever you are not going to be like one of the successful jisko kisi mein admission nahi milta usko arts mein admission milti yeah and i scored really well in my 10th so i could have been easily it was like science was a very easy way out for me my marks were good enough like i i scored really well so even these ruya people were like why are you taking admission in arts take in science you have good marks so even they were judging me for not taking science but i didn't want to I didn't want to go the engineering way or the doctor way. So why do I take science? Just to tell people I took science, and my parents were really supportive when I said I'm going to do arts because this is not. I want to do something creative. How are your parents coping up? I mean, you are taking well to being in Canada. What has been yeah. their reaction? And given that because of COVID, you can't even come back to meet them, right? <laughs> They are very busy in their own life. So my mom is their teacher. uh my brother is in his 12th right now uh and my dad is starting something again so he's work he in fact it was his first day yesterday so everyone's very busy in their own things so there's nothing of course they miss me but just because i left it's not like an empty house it's not become dull they're all having like a very good and busy life and i really look up to them because even my mom is a housewife till now she used to ha- help dad and It's just been last two years that she started working and she started teaching because she really loved teaching. So yeah, it's 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 been crazy. They do miss me because I was like the life of the house. You know how sons are; they are doing their thing, they're playing their game. But for me, I I like talking about everything. That okay, this is what I did today. This is what happened today. You have to see this. You have to see that. I like sharing. Everything, like literally everything. So tell me something. How has Shah Rukh Khan influenced your life? Okay so <laughs> I've been crazy romantic I am that person who's that filmy and romance and oh airport endings and and he is like the epitome of romance like he is the one person so I've I've seen since I was little since I was I don't even know when kuch kuch hota released I was so little I didn't even know what love was And since that time, he's been that person who I always looked up to. My last guest was somebody who was very close to Shah Rukh, who directed Kal Ho Na Ho. We just had just before you, Nikhil Advani, on the show. I was watching Kal Ho Na Ho just like two days before I was watching Kal Ho Na Ho. I mean, these are classics. These can never ever go out of style, out of story. For people, it might be just stupid romance, but. Yeah, I am that person, and I also use a lot of these things in my real life. Like when Yash comes home, there's a nice balcony candlelight date set up, and he keeps laughing. Like only you can do such things, you know. I keep, I keep, I love it because I feel even in a relationship, a lot of people are like, okay, we are married. First few years you celebrate anniversaries, and later in in your life you're like okay we used to celebrate now it's fine it's okay not a big deal but i think every day of your life if you don't put efforts in your relationship it's not going to be the same it it can never be the same it's something it's like work you know you have to put in efforts every day not efforts that drain you out and and you also didn't read a lot of philosophical books right you are even you no no read. i can't read So what kind of books did you read? I read all these similar, stupid, cheesy, romantic. Okay, so I used to love Durjay Datta and emphasis on love Durjay Datta. Uh, but eventually he got married and now he has a kid. But yeah, I. I By the way, to... before you told me, I didn't even know who this Durjay Datta was. He's not was. famous. Yeah, he's not. He's he's just famous amongst teen girls. You know, growing and. College time girls. He's famous among those girls. They're typical college time stories. They're not something you put your head in. You know, they are. They're not serious. They're just fun. It's a different version of Chetan Bhagat. I have not read Chetan Bhagat, but it is a different version of Chetan Bhagat. But yeah, I've read all of his books. All of his books. Even his titles are very cheesy. Like he wouldn't even pick it up. I don't know where it started, but it just started where I wanted to show off that oh, I'm reading a book, you know. <laughs> so what was his titles? What were the type kind of titles he had for his books? Um, I don't even remember anymore. It's been a while, but the 
the girl of my dreams and stuff like that so so, so i so i think we can conclude that you have only learned sharukh nomics or whatever yeah. sharukh's philosophy yeah. of life yeah i've seen so many interviews also which is i also stated one of his quoted one of his lines so yeah i i like him as a man and the fact that i love him so much is also because he came from nothing to becoming something it's all on his own he didn't have a family i mean of course i had my family to support me i'm not saying that but in the field that he picked he did not have anyone to build in connections saying oh you know he's so much someone's son you know just give him the first movie he did everything on his own and that's what i love about such people and, and i then like what, if you if you do meet sharukh khan what will be the question you'd like to ask him what would you know want to know from nothing. you already i'll just i'll just smile i'll just sit in front of him and i'll just smile like a fool that's it i'm not <laughs> going to do anything i might not even hug him i'll just like i'll just look at him and i'll just i'll just be that creepy one of his creepy fans i'll just sit and smile i admire him so much I I I don't admire him like a creep level where I go to his Insta DMs and slide messages. I I've, I've never I don't even follow him. So have you been on Mannat? Have you gone to Mannat and stood outside? No, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm not that I'm not that fan like not those type of fan, but I just look up to him. Like I admire his personality and as a person. I'm not a fan of anyone like that that I would go like, "Oh my god." So tell me something, what changes have you seen in Indian society in the last whatever 10 odd years since the whole advent and you know because you've been so much outside your own family, I'm sure you have relatives and friends and everybody is, you know, while you are doing what you are doing, I'm sure this is not the same. I didn't see same. any change. Frankly, I didn't see any change uh because the time when i was when we started looking for arranged marriage rishtas and all people used to actually reject me because i was an influencer they were like you might not fit in our family you might be that person who's always partying you're always shooting you know you're not a normal person so they used to look at me like oh no you know so i was actually rejected because of my profession they don't you even know the because person because you were on social media you were a social media influencer yes Yes, yes. So they were like, "Oh, she, she if every Friday, Saturday, she must be just partying. She won't be like a home person, and she's all high class." And you don't even know me as a person. How can you reject me? We don't even know you. Don't even have a Pepsi or Coke. You don't even have soft drinks. Right? I, yeah, I don't even have soft beverages. So I'm like, you don't know me. You don't judge me. So I don't think things have changed. It is. so annoying and i used to stay very close to station so even when i left my house wearing a skirt i used to still get stares so even if it's like some educated people who are looking to marry off his son this is what the expectations they had so be it a literate person or an illiterate person on the streets i don't see the change the only change is everyone is on social media they just don't want to accept it as a career I don't know why. I mean there are universities there are classes for social media how to learn Instagram Facebook there it's it's a profession and they still not okay with it you know they've still not accepted it as a profession if you're an influencer okay but what do you do for a living So what was the what was the most uh, bizarre incident which happened to you because of your social media presence what people thought about you Uh um, so a lot of times I have very recently I started getting DMs from people saying you look very rich I need money send me money <laughs> I mean you don't know anything about my life what is wrong with you madam I need a new phone send me money very poor <laughs> <laughs> you should say here is my upi details you first send me money yeah i am like dude all of this is collaboration i've not spent on this <laughs> i've not bought this even that aldo is a collaboration aldo is cheap it's still a collaboration i have not bought it what do i tell him this also this also been a few people who used to i don't know how they found my address but they used to send me like flowers and teddy bears and all to my house and one guy also came to my college one day it's like i am standing on this gate number i know you're in this college come and meet me <laughs> and they have this 
they talk also in such a weird way madam please madam so i don't i don't have fans i have great followers who will only comment on my pictures when i post a bikini picture sexy body madam <laughs> It's not sexy. I am taking I'm stucking my tummy in. That's not sexy. <laughs> so No, no, I think I think you yeah. know that's that's really what it is, right? I mean, already there is so much of, you know, nonsense happening on uh, the internet and on Facebook and Instagram and I'm sure you have all these creep accounts writing all kinds of nonsense, but there, you take there it, have been yeah. fake accounts. I mean, I'm not even famous to make a fake account on my name, you know. I mean, what do you get? Come on, I fake... think you are famous enough if people are asking you money and you know all of that. Clearly, that's famous. not famous. I mean, would you expect Shah Rukh Khan or Akshay Kumar getting a DM saying "I need money"? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they get a lot of such DMs. I'm sure. <laughs> Give me money, like what? Seriously, so yeah, and I don't, and you know, that is the confidence. That confidence. I mean, I don't even have one percent of that confidence. Sending a DM saying, "Give but me." Tell money. me something. Are, are you religious? Do you believe in God or religion or? Any I other? don't. Do I don't anything? believe in different religions. I just believe there is one superpower. And I bow down to that. I I have never. I don't. Build, I go to temple because Yash likes it. My family likes it. Not re- religiously, but sometimes one of the valley or something. But I don't even pray. I just close my eyes and all I say is thank you. Even if I'm in the worst of situations, even if I'm going through something crazy, all I say is thank you. I I also don't believe there's Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai. I feel it just there's one superpower on all of us. that's it there's no gods do you consider what do you what do you think about destiny is that something you believe in um i believe we make our own destiny i feel if like i said even if god comes and tells you you in your destiny you're going to be famous you're going to be successful you'll be rich even if god comes and tells you you have to work for it if you're just going to be on bed every day and saying okay no god has told me i'm going to be successful that's in my destiny it's not going to happen you have to work you have to make ends meet so that's what i feel you make your own destiny and it's just it's just not going to work for you and a lot of people say lucky oh you're just lucky you know yeah you're lucky you this so what I do you think what... i hate that i hate when someone says you're lucky you can't just be lucky if you didn't work for it it's probably you didn't work for that particular thing but you're putting your efforts your hard work for such a long thing for something and this is the end result of it you might not find a connection in it but there is a connection so you if if you just wake up every day and you chill and you just got like a big offer no that's not going to happen even a big bollywood even abhishek bachchan he is the son of amitabh bachchan he still works hard so if you say you're lucky you amitabh's son it's easy for you it is not easy you know you still have to work So no, I I hate it when someone says you're just lucky, you just got lucky, or oh, it was just in your destiny. No, there is a lot of work that was behind it. You just can't see it, you know. And I think, and and that's really what it is, right? You you also invest a lot in your self development. I was seeing that you uh, you even learned how to do photography and do all these Photoshop tricks and all of that. You know, how did you get into all these other things? Right, they just seem to be very very interesting. I I just didn't want to rely on because I started feeling very dependent on the photographers to edit and send it to me and I also feel that it's their their creativity it's what how they look at that particular picture or the piece of content it's not mine I'm just posting what is given to me what how am I adding my touch to it and I can't even guide someone else if I don't know the basics of it If I know the basics of it, I can guide someone saying, "Okay, this is what I need." Even if I have a team working on it, so I just use the COVID time instead of just watching Netflix every day. I was religiously getting up, sitting on my desk, and I decided these are the things I'm going to learn today. So every day I had a routine. These did I check these off? If not, okay, I have to finish it the next day. I did have Netflix times also, but my major priority was how can I. use these few months and actually boost up my growth so what i was before covid i am actually like at least 100% in a better shape better skills than what i was before 
Well, and that's really one of the things I keep telling everybody, right? Invest in yourself, invest in yeah. your health, invest in your knowledge, invest in your own education. Yes. And you are the best example of that, right? You made this time to learn a new skill. So what are such skills which people can learn online quickly, which can help enhance them? Do you have any ideas for people? There's literally everything online. I don't really go on YouTube because that is not verified by anyone i can make a random video talking about cancer and put it up i don't you know so anyone can talk about any topic even if they don't have knowledge for it i feel go on particular websites like this udemy the skillshare because it's verified by the company and then it's on so that's right information you can learn anything singing dancing literally anything even making a piece of furniture or photography anything you like you know, there's no education that will go waste. There's no learning that you will get can go waste. You don't have to learn. And any, are there any particular courses you would recommend people to look at? Like, of course, one in Photoshop, which is the course. I learned Photoshop from Dan. I don't remember his full name. But if you just search Photoshop for Dan, he's actually been with Adobe for like years now. And he knows the in and out of it. So that's where I learned Photoshop from. I learned Lightroom from different seminars that I searched for online and came across. People have started hating these seminars because COVID, there was so many seminars during COVID. But, you know, I, I feel you, you don't have to learn something just to make money out of it. It could also be your passion. It could be an added learning. It can be anything. You, you should, when you tell someone who are you, there should be, you should have an explanation apart from what is your job profile. That's not who you are. That's what you're working for. Who are you? You like cooking? Okay, learn cooking. You can't just say, oh, I love cooking. But what you can make is the basic that everyone can, you know, so. Well, I made sushi in the lockdown. Wow. I learned how to make sushi. That is very difficult, especially the role bit to keep everything in place. That is good. Yeah, but I, I, I only looked at YouTube. I did not go to Udemy. But, <laughs> but yeah, next cooking, time I... no, so for cooking... Even I go to YouTube, but if you're learning like a proper skill from the base, if your base is not clear, like for Photoshop, if my base is not clear and on YouTube, the problem was they're different parts. So there's no streamlined class. Like you start from point A to point Z on YouTube. It's just a random one part they'll explain or some other part they'll explain. It depends on my search, but on Skillshare, I could actually find a proper, like a class so you learn you start from understanding photoshop to what all you can do like a properly streamlined course youtube is not a course it's a one-off so when you're doing something one-off youtube is great and also it's free so yeah so so tell me have you not thought of starting a company or a startup you know why why would you keep doing these one-off brand deals i mean can't you just start a company and give in canada uh, no, I did. Uh, my company is registered in Canada, a marketing company by my name. I did register it. I I already have clients. I have a restaurant client here. I have a wedding planning company that is in India that I'm handling and a few other clients that I already am working on. So, yeah. No, what I meant was a startup idea. Why are you not looking at a startup and doing like a company? And I want to. I want to do something. But I was also speaking. To, I, you know, the person... Uh, I don't, I don't know if I should name the brand, but uh, the Health Factory Breads by Vinay, it's also part of the Goki store, the protein breads. I was also talking to him to bring that company here under my company and start that, but he got a little busy. So I want to do something, but when it comes to startup, I just don't want to do it because everyone's doing a startup. I don't want to be like, oh, even I started something till my entire mind and heart and soul is not into it. Right now, my platter is really full with the digital marketing clients I have as a blogger and the other things that I'm doing. My palette is really full with that. I don't want to take up something if I can't put my 100% to it. So where do you see yourself 10, 20, 30 years down the line? Doing the same things, but much better and people knowing me for it. Right now, people don't know me for it. And of course, making like 100% living out of out of just this, like having a proper team handling all my digital marketing clients, having a proper team managing my blogging bit. These are the two main verticals that I want to grow on. But even in the next 20 years, we'll be doing the same thing. This is what I love. And yes, it, next 20 years, next 50 years or how much ever I live, I found my love and I want to stick to this. Like this is what so 
digital marketing uh, what we do is website social media influencer marketing building apps and everything for brands so that's it. that is like one vertical so it's it's more like a startup like a marketing startup but i work in a different way where i have a team i already have a team but there are a bunch of freelancers from different parts of india so that's how i work with that so that is one vertical and the second vertical is the blogging bit which is me as a personal brand so just the two of these yes and is there a different strategy for canada versus india or do you think doing business in canada is easier or tougher uh no i think it's the same strategy because it's still business it's still marketing these things don't change from country because these things are global social media like instagram is not different in india or in canada it's the same thing you know the only difference uh, is now you're getting paid in dollars versus rupees yeah yeah so yeah so no i think the strategy stays the same because my all, every time my strategy has been that are you happy with it as a client you know and i also work in reverse instead when a client comes to me it's just telling them okay this is my budget if you want to do it you know i'm not going to go down on my budget instead i tell the client tell me your budget everyone has a set budget tell me your budget i'll tell you what all is possible in this and if i suggest something else these are the things that i suggest add on and this is how much it will cost so when i work in reverse the client feels safe that okay it's happening in my budget you know she's ready to and she's also suggesting me don't do this do this there are a lot of times when clients say okay i want this you know even if it is gonna give me a lot of profit i'm like it is not gonna help your brand and i like staying true i mean just to kind of adding there right right now as you know there is so much of news about the ill effects of social media facebook yeah. is termed as an evil company yeah. you know all the fake news everywhere around yeah. lot of people are quitting social media yeah. do you really think social media will even survive 20 years i mean you know you are like banking too much on social media and this whole it's like 20 years back <laughs> you know it, there was something else after 20 True. years there will be no possibly social media then what will you do it is it is possible like 20 years back there was radio today there's no radio you know so that transition will happen but from radio it went to tv from tv then they started the cinema so it's always going to progress and how i go from one to the other is on me on how you know how i'm accepting that change I mean Yash has told me a lot of times you are on Instagram today tomorrow what if like in India all the TikTokers are they are like okay what do we do now because they had millions of followers they were earning really well and suddenly the platform is gone like okay what do we do now so of course everything has an end but when there is an end there is a start of something new because there's so many people who are all their energies all their attention is all on social media today there has to be something else that will come after social media and having that change is very important as a company and as an individual both so what would be your advice be to young people today uh you know who are confused who don't know what to do who you know who have all these challenges what is the your advice to them in terms of what they should look at you know when you're confused just do everything which is on your list so when you're confused you will be confused amongst three to four things maybe just take up short courses in everything that's what i did i was really confused what to do i learned everything because still you're not a part of that so if you're thinking okay i want to do fashion designing or should i be- go into interior designing take up short courses which are you know one two month short courses and you can do both of these courses together so when you so it's con- called it's called try before you buy <laughs> exactly exactly so before you're enrolling in a degree course of 3 or 4 years and after you enter you're like okay this is not what i want to do that's what i did with fashion designing i took up a one year diploma which was happening alongside my graduation so i did not waste any time i just got some extra knowledge so just try these things you now you don't even have to go to universities and college you can just pay online you'll also get a degree a proper diploma even if you do it from home try these till you're not stepping in the shoes you will not know what you want to do after you're done with it you'll come back with at least one favorite out of everything you'll know what you enjoyed the most and then just go for it if you're just going to say it you know usually parents do this you know talk to this one your cousin is in this they'll make you talk to so many people but if i'm talking to you you are into fitness you'll tell me okay it's a great field if i'm talking to someone else he's into he's a dietitian he'll be like no 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 don't do uh don't get into gym coaching get in become a dietitian this is more better 
you're all talking as from your side it's your perception but that person needs to decide on themselves you know it's just going to confuse them if they talk to more people so just do your own research learn it yourself and then decide that's what i feel stop talking to people and stop just going on google and browsing which is the best profession and and do you have any regrets in life anything you would no. want to change or do differently no no i i if in if i'm in a situation where i'm like okay should i do it or not do it i always go for just to do it because later i don't want to regret thinking okay what if i didn't do it you know and kuch to hoga i mean you have done so many things kuch to hoga ki ye nahi karna chahiye tha no literally no because even like i said i've studied so much a lot of times i was confused if should i do it or no i did not pursue fashion designing but i did learn something for it you know like i said education any type of learning be it from a professor from a course from a person will never go waste in your life so there's no regrets even if even if i was when i was a teen if i liked someone i just went there and like hi listen i like you you know like whatever you want to date me you date me no no fine whatever so any point of time i've never been a person who will be like okay i shouldn't do it i just do it because if i didn't do it i'll regret it and if i did it i will learn something out of it so yeah it's going to be one experience were there uh, any points in your life which were pivotal moments that you that that decision you think that that decision got you here and what happened in those pivotal moments like i think surely coming to canada is a pivotal moment for you right yeah, in, in a sense yeah yeah so were yes. there any such other pivotal moments for you so i was in i was 18 when i got my first, so when i was doing fashion designing i was actually uh, one of the top 3 students in the class so i was sent to lacme fashion week to intern under a designer and that designer by the end of the 7 days he liked my it was free i was not even paid for working for the entire 7 days he liked me so much that on the 7th day he comes and tells me so he was his entire working was in delhi and i was in mumbai on the 7th day he comes and tells me that uh, you're the general manager of my company uh, you're going to handle the entire operations in mumbai including uh, sourcing <laughs> sourcing for magazines styling bollywood celebrities for their red carpets for shoots uh any clientele in mumbai everything you're going to handle i was 18 <laughs> if i didn't do fashion designing i wouldn't have had that and there was no fashion designing role in that i was actually does it this sound really i mean in 7 days you intern yeah. and was eight day they make you general manager ye dal mein kuch kala hai delhi wale na kuch to gadbad hai no no so i was i worked for him for Three to four years, and I was the only one handling his operations in Mumbai. Wow. He was a standalone designer. He didn't have like a big team and all, but he was amazing. Like people like Sanakshi, Janelia, uh, Deepika, K- Karina, all of these have worn his outfits on the front of the magazine, like the cover of the magazine, walked the ramp in it. So he was a good designer, but he didn't have like a big setup and a big team and everything. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll do it. And if I If that didn't happen, I wouldn't have realized that I love management because the entire job position that I did was management. It was not nowhere close to fashion designing. So I did that for three to four years. I'm still in touch with him. He's just such a lovely boy. He he only shows at Paris Fashion Week now, so he's reached that level now, you know. Um, so that moment is when I felt that okay, I'm a management person. I love organizing. I love managing things. So that's when I decided to do my MBA and. then the things flowed and how i got into blogging was i was loving being in front of the camera but l- like i said i also had to provide for my family i needed that month end paycheck i couldn't rely being an actor and probably not getting role this month and doing something one month you know and finally so, vishaka i mean there is a lot of times in your profession you have to look, look at your moral compass yeah you know a lot of brands may tell you to do things or say things which may or may not be true or will be half truth right how do you handle that especially as a blogger or as a as somebody which people listen I, to i i don't take up i don't take up such projects i have been approached by liquor companies a lot of times they pay really well uh, so there was this thing where they fly me to goa this like pay for the flight for the hotel 5 6 days sco- attend concerts and parties just do whatever you want plus they'll pay me for it to promote a liquor brand and i did not take it up because i don't drink 
and I don't want to promote something I don't believe in. So I did not take up that project. I saw all my friends going there. There was a casino party and everything. And I was very happy sitting in my pajamas in my home and working on some other project. But I, I can't promote something I don't believe in. Having your Nimbu Pani. Yeah, I'll have Nariel Pani. I always have this water finishing three liters every day. But uh, yeah, I can't go against my morals or things I don't believe in. So no. Fantastic. I mean, in this time, especially on the social media, uh, you know, when you don't know what information is true and what is not true, it's 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 very yeah. good to have some kind of a moral compass set. Yeah, yeah. And and even, you know, when you look at social media, a lot of times I get messages saying, did you actually try this? Is it really good? So I understand where these people come from because there's so many bloggers. Every other page is a blogger. Everyone is just promoting something or the other. And I actually have, even if I don't know the person, I've actually done like a video tutorial and send them the video that, okay, see, this is the change. If it's a skincare or a hair product or anything, that this is how I'm using it. This is how it works, you know? So yeah, just just be true. And that's why, that's my USP. That's why it's easier to get brand deals Probably those brands don't even know that I've demonstrated this, this product to some follower of mine who asked for it. But it's just me as a person. So, so out of all the products you have, you know, at some point of time endorsed or used, what is the product you end up using the most or anything you bought off late, which is, let's say, less than $100, which you would recommend people to try? And this is not a paid plug. We can tell everybody. Yeah, yeah, is not. not telling, <laughs> what are the products, five products, what will you tell people to buy? Something that I bought. Yeah. I bought, right? I really like the Nivea. So I I am very, very cheap. Okay. I buy like cheap, but good stuff. Uh, so I got Nivea Moisture. Let's say value for money. It is not yeah, cheap. It's, it's not value cheap, for value for money. True. So uh, my skin dries up. So I, I one thing I need is like the Nivea Moisturize. Again, not sponsored by Nivea. A major, uh, ex- the purchase I did was in a camera uh, because I wanted to grow have just been shooting on my iPhone. Again, I found like the good camera, which is on a lower end. So I could, you know. Um, and which brand is that? I got a Sony Alpha A6000. So I saw. I uh, And that is also not a plug. Yeah, it's it's not. I bought it. Like I spent for it. So I've watched Confessions of a Shopaholic and that movie's really taught me how to find cheap stuff in store. So you dig in the last piece. So there was this mirror I really wanted and the mirrors are really expensive in Canada. Like it starts from $60, $80. Mirrors are expensive are in very Canada. very expensive in Canada. India, you just go on street, you'll find so many sellers selling mirror. It's not a big deal in India. And I found this one for $10 because it had like a little <laughs> black mark on the white frame of it. I'm like, okay, I'm anyway going to, you know, spray paint it or add nail, white nail polish on it. I don't care. I'll buy it. So if I'm getting something for ten dollars, which is actually priced for eighty dollars, why not? Eighty dollars ka mirror hai wo. Yeah, that's like four thousand. Maybe it makes you look thinner or whatever. I don't know. Kuch feature hoga. No, so these are all these are all home decor pieces that makes your house look very modern and elegant. Okay. It's nothing. It's just a round mirror, you know. But because it got famous on Pinterest, everyone has this over their dressing table. It's just expensive. That's it. Hmm. I'm like, okay, so I, I found the cheapest one and and I bought it. Um, I want to I want to buy a new laptop because I'm not able to edit so much in it, but I'm very mindful of my finances. So I'm actually waiting and saving until I feel I'm I, I can't save enough. I won't buy it. So I'm very particular. So yeah, Nivea moisturizer, camera, mirror. I bought a pot for my snake plant which was worth $60, but I bargained for $25 because even that had a chip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sounding so cheap right now. I added a little nail paint on it and now it's fine. So, <laughs> so that and the next purchase was furniture for my house because we just moved in. So tell me, what is the impression of Indians there in Canada? Who are immigrants, they think they are negotiating. No, no, no. This is negotiating, not bargaining, negotiating. But I just asked the store that, listen, this is chipped. I'm ready to buy this. What is the price? So then we discuss and we come to a price point. So no, Indians don't think that you can just go to stores and market your way out. You, if you find a bad, like a chipped product or something, you you can ask for a better price. And the major uh, expense was furniture from Ikea. 
because we moved here last year and we did not buy any furniture because none of us had a job because of covid so now finally yash got a job very happy so we finally bought a bed we bought a closet everything is so that's that was the next expense that we had yeah fantastic and what is your advice to people who are thinking to immigrate to canada what is the real thing and what is the marketing uh, so it is slow it is true that it is slow uh, but if you are someone who is who loves a little group of people who's not you know uh, a big and public ka hai there is nobody in the khali hai right Pura it is khali it is khali so even if it is little cars they're like kandivali station has more crowd than agreed, the entire city agreed. of toronto and you know when they say oh it's going to be traffic like, this is traffic <laughs> i mean this is not traffic stop complaining you come to india you will know so so yeah and and you know i have i've heard that canadians are very apologetic they're very sweet you know even if you do something they'll be like okay sorry and that is true i'm like oh who 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 i was literally looking back when someone was like okay sorry i hit them by mistake and they're like oh i'm sorry i was literally looking behind I'm like are you sarcastic and then i realized i'm in canada yeah. so it is true it's it's not a joke but that's how that's how they are they're very sweet they're very polite but and from a job prospects perspective you know are there a lot of jobs because i know like i said everybody is thinking ki canada mein ja ke pata nahi kya hone wala hai but reality hai <laughs> it takes time you know because so many people are coming from india to canada even the canadians when they are hiring they still thinking that okay they've come from a different culture will they settle in our culture and also because during covid time you're not going to be a part of the office physically so what what these guys are thinking from hiring perspective it is a risk for them they don't know you you're not a part you've not been a part of this country for a long time so it will take a few months but you will land up a job there are a lot of jobs so there are a lot of global companies which are also very famous in india this png this you know this starcom so a lot of famous companies are hiring day in and day out so yeah you will end up but you will need patience you might take a few months to get one so tell me except sharukh khan what else will it take for you to come <laughs> back to india I will I think just visit India. I'm happy I'm happy here. I because I I I'm I'm not someone who likes a lot of social life. I don't like going out every weekend or having so many relatives. No no, I'm just asking on behalf so, of all the Twitter and Instagram fans of yours that what will it take for Vishakha to come back to India? Come back as in to visit or to move back to India? Yeah, move back to India. What is there in nothing, Canada? Nothing. Nothing. Uh because for Yash as an engineer his future is better here than in india what he earns in one month is going to be his salary in india for the entire year so he doesn't have a future there uh, so for him uh, and I, i am fine working in canada or india it really doesn't matter but for him uh, it will be canada or maybe us after we get a citizenship here maybe we can move there so yeah Canada or US yeah so do you think Canada is basically a gateway to go to the US is that how you think about it um uh, i don't care if i'm in US or Canada for me i'm fine but for him he because he stayed in US for like 7 to 8 years he is a US person now he's like i want to go back to US so after getting a citizenship he's planning we might move back to Michigan or we'll stay in Windsor in Canada and he can work in Michigan so something like that but he had like us is everything for him so because he didn't get his work visa it didn't get extended so he had to move out of us is the only reason we are in canada we would have been in us right now so yeah no i think vishaka it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you i think it's so amazing yeah. all the stuff you're doing all the things you are juggling your amazing hustling and entrepreneurship skills how you are organized and how you take everything so positively i think it has been a big learning from me and i hope all the people listening out here can take a lesson that it is your attitude and how you respond to a situation is what matters and not how good or bad the situation is thanks a lot vishaka and looking forward to maybe getting you back on the show once you are hitting the millions of followers and becoming now now i will ask you to come on my show <laughs> it'll be the other way around <laughs>
Okay, I'll I'll definitely come on your show. But like I said, for now, yeah. Uh, once again, thanks a lot for being on the Vishal Gondal show. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to getting you back. Same here. Have a great day, you guys. Bye bye. I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd like to thank the sponsors on the network this week, Storytel and The Whole Truth Foods. Thank you for supporting us. So, great week on the network again this week. Definitely do check out the Pragati Podcast. Pavan spoke to Krishna Shok. They discussed science, knowledge, and the wonder of Indian home cooking. Staying in the realm of food, on this round is on me. We had A.D. Singh as a guest. Gauri and A.D. discussed the 10 years anniversary of the table and the 20 year anniversary of Olive. So two of Bombay's biggest restauranteurs have a conversation about the restaurant business. All Things Policy celebrated 500 episodes on January 27th. Manoj talks to Aditya and Anirudh about the surprising origins of the podcast, its evolution over the last few years, and its exciting future. This episode also marks the video debut, so definitely do check that out on YouTube. On Storytellers and Storytellers, Vineet talks to Ranjit Pratap Singh. Ranjit is the co-founder and CEO of Pratilipi. Pratilipi is a company that's recently acquired IVM. And Ranjit on this episode discusses his plans to build a homegrown media empire, his love for comics, and how India can have its own comic cinematic universe. And finally, Cyrus had an exciting week. We had some amazing guests this week. We had Vishal Gondal come and talk about Fauji. We had Atish Tathir talk about the various issues that he had been facing with his OCI card and other things like that. We had Adam Dow talk about things going on in the US and like, you know, the evolution of what's happening there. We had Siddharth Kanan come and talk about his history with Cyrus and his new show. So definitely do come check that out as well. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. Hi, I am Sadaf. And I'm Arshit. Khani ka itihas, economics, policy, psychology, sab hai menu pe. Only on the Nankali podcast. Every Wednesday, sif IVM podcast app ya website par. Ya fir jahaan se bhi aap apne podcast sunte ho.